everyone, it's Diane with Sobatique, and today is Fabric Friday, and we're going to talk a little bit about our Sobatique canvas. Over the past couple of weeks, uh, we've received a lot of questions, a lot of comments, a lot of suggestions, a lot of different information from you all. We appreciate it so very much about our canvas. And so I decided I was going to work with it more. I've made this market tote, I've made an apron and um, the range backpack for a Christmas gift for my sister. And so I've done a little bit with it and I, I wanted to do another more detailed bag, which is going to be and is the Got Your Back 2.1. And this is a backpack that has a lot of detail. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I wanted to also share with you all <laughs> some of the answers to questions that you guys have been asking and a little bit of clarification. So let's start where we always start, which is a little bit about the Batik canvas. Our canvas is 57 inches wide and it is so it's nice and wide and it has I would say that the weight of our canvas is light to medium weight canvas I don't have the ounces per yada yada I don't have all of that I haven't taken the time to just do that um, so for those of you who do work with grams and weight for your fabrics I will get that, I just don't have it right now. But if I was going to compare this, and this was some of the questions and some of the, the um, clarification needed is how heavy is this canvas? We each have a thought in our minds when we hear the word canvas. And I think it's all dependent on what we've worked with, the fabrics we've worked with, the bags we have, how many quilt shows we went to where you got your canvas bag, <laughs> whatever it happens to be, um, that definition is in your head. So our canvas being a light to mid weight, it is not, and I hate talking about what it's not, but it is not in comparison. It is not a duck canvas. It is not a heavy duck canvas where you would take a bag with its handles like a market bag and stand it up and have it just perfectly rigid. It is not that. Um, it is a, let me actually on that note, let me grab my, I made a market bag because I was working with a friend and I, I've mentioned this on a video before about how do I show people the um, weight of the fabric. And so I made a market bag. This is a simple bag made from our Phoenix Twilight Blue and hand dyed Twilight Blue combination that we have. And um, if I simply, it has strong handles that are no interfacing. I did not use anything else in this bag except for canvas, plain and simple. So the, the handles are just the double folded handle and stitched down. They're attached through a nice decorative finish up top. And then I do have two layers of canvas down below just because I wanted to do something from a style perspective. And um, that's it. So if I were to set this on a table so that you can see it, it's not going to stand up. It is a lighter to midweight canvas. So um, there are weights of canvas that include a second fiber or um, it might be polyester, it might be vinyl, it might be something else to give it more of a rigid feel to it. And so um, Bruce and I are talking about whether or not we should explore a heavier weight canvas that can be dyed. So it has to be a natural fiber through and through, otherwise it can't be petite. And so um, let me know. Actually, that's going to be a great question. The heftiness or heaviness that you would like from a canvas because we answer your questions. And so if there are enough of you <laughs> that really love 
a much more structured, heavy canvas, let us know. So s write something in the comments below and let, it, let me know what you're thinking and what you would use it for. Okay. And we'll take it from there. But we do have many samples when we were creating um, our first collection of canvas. We have so many test samples and um, those decisions are hard to make as to which one to start with. So nothing to say we can't change, nothing to say we can't add another component to our grouping of fabrics. So let me know. Okay. I'd love to know. So this is a market bag. No interfacing, no nothing. And so that really does show what the weight of the canvas really is, okay? I've also made an apron. I made that red holiday apron, which was perfect because that just, it might be a little too heavy for an apron because it doesn't move very much, um, but it really gave um, enough coverage and was able to, you know, you wipe your hands on your apron and all that good stuff. So that was a great, great sample that I made as well. And then of course, my gift that I gave to my sister, which was the range backpack. And that was my first attempt working with quilting canvas. And um, the quilting of the canvas was a cotton plus canvas with um, the soft and stable in the middle of it. And it really, it's wonderful and she loves it. And it's going to be a really, really durable, long lasting bag simply because it is made with the canvas. So my next, of course, project was to do a Biani bag for a couple of reasons. One, I really wanted to be able to work with the canvas enough to understand how many layers of fabric we can stitch through and still make it look good and not really challenge our sewing machines. Because canvas is heavier than a cotton. So quilting with the canvas, and here's one of the pieces to the, the new um, Got Your Back bag that I'm making is we have canvas as the outside and our cotton as the lining, and then it's quilted with the soft and stable in the middle. And I used our long arm um, to do all of the quilting for all of the pieces, um, quilted at first and then cut them all out. So I really wanted to make sure that I feel comfortable with quilting the canvas, and I do. For that though, I did use a size 16 needle on my long arm machine. So it was a, um, a little heavier needle than I normally do. I, I'm normally quilting with a 14 on my long arm. So um, that worked out beautifully and I love how it turns out. But working with a heavier canvas or a heavier, how do I say this? Not cotton, but canvas even though our canvas is light to medium weight, it's adding to the structure of how much you're sewing through. Just that simple difference really does make a difference. So I'm glad I'm doing a detailed bag like a Biani bag because there's lots of binding um, and sewing through various layers can be up to two layers of quilted fabric plus three pockets lined up and then binding on top of that. So um, we're gonna do a little test today and I'm excited to do it simply because I stopped putting this project together last night. I have all of the pieces ready to go. Here's one of the mesh pockets. <laughs> you know, here's one of the outside pockets. Um, and here is the front. This was my first attempt at a binding. This is a front flap. These are This is all the components that you put together for a bag. But here's the front flap and it has binding on it. My binding is canvas. And so I thought to myself, boy, was that a wise decision or not a wise decision? Should I have kept that cotton every time I'm working with a coordinate? And there's no answer that's right or wrong until we test it. 
And so I did do a little curved binding on this flap and I felt comfortable with it, very comfortable, but it's one layer of fabric. So it's a, actually two, it's a quilted fabric sandwich plus the lining, another piece of lining on this one. So it's really not that hard to do that. What I want to share with you today is my test on how to quilt through two layers of quilted fabric where it includes canvas and a pocket also attached to it and going around a curve. Um, I just need to, need to understand if I'm going to shift with my binding, I'm going to do it now so that I have a bag that looks cohesive and not like, oh, last minute decision. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to take you through our little test with the binding and hopefully it will answer that question of whether or not I stick with canvas or go to cotton. This is the smaller version of Biani's backpack. And this is um, using our canvas sample that we sent to her. This is the back at you bag. And I wanna share with you this inside binding. It has a great contrast, so it's really gonna be easy to see what I'm talking about here. But there is really no binding except for the flap there's no binding on the outside of this bag. And so we look at the inside and I'm going to flip that out. And so this binding here is covering one layer of quilted fabric, two layers of quilted fabric. And remember the outside layer is canvas on both and the inside layer is cotton. So, as we go around the top portion of this bag, it's really not that bad because we're only dealing with the two quilted cottons that we're binding, okay? But the minute we go down further, we get more involved. <laughs> and this is what caused me to stop working on my project last night was um, my concern for the number of layers that we are going to be adding the canvas binding to um, inside this bag. So now we have our two layers of quilted cotton, and then we have cotton slash canvas, and then we have our pocket. This pocket is a double layer of cotton, and there is a lightweight fusible interfacing in there. So now if I push this back a little bit, you're going to see that we have additional fabric inside that binding. This binding is now getting a bit thick. So, or um, inside this raw edge. So we stitch on the binding, we flip it over and then we top stitch. And every time I look at um, one of the samples that the Annie team has made, I am forever, <laughs> envious of the amazing, amazing way that they stitch down their binding. It's beautiful. This is cotton binding that she used. Even though it's red, it's not our canvas. And I at first thought it was, but it is not now that I look at it really, really closely. So what we're going to do is a little test. And I have created this mock-up because I want to test this so that you know how many layers um, really is enough <laughs> to go through when you're dealing with binding and working with canvas. That's my, my goal. I'm gonna show you this real quick. This is a portion of the bag that I'm working on right now. This is canvas. And then the inside here is our cotton and they're soft and stable inside. This is a quilted piece. This is the side pocket. This is just a straight binding, okay? This is canvas. I have found that with one layer of quilted fabric and the canvas, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. And even top stitching, we've got two layers of quilted fabric here, if you can see that. And I have 
attached the pocket and folded it over and then top stitched. That works out beautifully. We've got a really, really simple, so that's, you know, simple finish. And um, up here, we have a couple of joins and then we have our canvas that finishes off that um, seam, flattens it out and it looks great. That all works beautifully because I'm only working through, this is just one quilted piece and this is just a double fold of canvas. Um, so that works out beautifully. So any straight, straight binding is fine. Let's talk a little bit about the stretch of the binding. And this is canvas. This is my canvas for the project. And I have cut this two and a quarter inches wide, which is the recommendation for Annie. And actually I make all of my quilt bindings two and a quarter inches too. So if we pull this, we do have stretch, okay? There is stretch and it will go around a curve. We set that aside. Here's a regular cotton, one from our um, 115 inch wide collection. If I fold this down, again, it's two and a quarter inches, pull it, it has a lot more stretch and a lot more give. So, and it feels different because it is, of course, not as tight of a weave as the canvas is very tight, very, very tight. So I'm gonna take and add binding to a little mock-up here that I have. This mock-up is to represent this top portion of the bag, okay, right here. So here's what I did. I took two layers of our quilted fabric, so canvas, soft and stable, and our cotton. I stitched them together so I have a curve, and then I mocked up a fake pocket. <laughs> this pocket is um, made from canvas. I did not add interfacing to it. I just thought that this will give us enough of a test. So when you're looking at the thickness of what we're gonna stitch through, it gets pretty thick. But one thing to always remember is this stitch, this seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. When we add our binding, it's going to be stitching right in that quarter of an inch. That's my goal is to always reuse my stitch line because it's already been compacted. And that, that will help me get this on a lot easier if I'm always going in the same stitch line as I previously used. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna fold this in half. I don't press it. I just simply fold it in half. You know, it was the Biani patterns that got me to do this. She just never presses because it helps with going around the curve. Um, and it just lets allows you to move better than to always have a permanent press mark in it. And um, so that is something that I took away from her instructions that I will continue to do, even on quilts. Okay, so I clipped the binding to my test sample and with a quarter of an inch, and I might actually tell you a slight quarter of an inch, um, I'm gonna go all the way around here and see how this turns out. I am using a 14 needle and I've actually contemplated going up to a 16, but right now I'm using a 14. And I'm also a very big proponent of the Biani stiletto. You need one of these to guide your fabric through these curves. And especially when um, 
we flip the binding to the other side to do our top stitching. It's actually going through a lot better than I thought it was going to. And I think it's because I'm real, really staying on that line, that previous seam line. And I think that's going to make the difference. Okay, so we have that bound. Now I'm gonna quickly here just clip this off. I'm gonna get rid of this excess here. Okay, we'll set this aside. And now we have, and actually, if I look at this, I'm really on that seam line very closely. That probably is the, it makes the world of difference when adding this binding. So now what we wanna do, my pocket needs to stay over here, is we need to flip this around, okay? So we're gonna flip this and take it around to the other side. And I am going to clip this. I just feel like that really helps get everything in the right place and work it around your curves and pull, push that in there, push your um, layers of fabric in there. Start by clipping the beginning and here, and then we'll work our way around the corner. Okay. Okay. And I'm just, I only have one more clip here. So I'm just going to put it right in the middle. There we go. You see? And also the one thing to remember too, is that we really, again, thinking about that seam line, if we keep our stitches in this seam line, it reduces the amount of stress on your sewing machine. So we really want to only have, I'm gonna jump back over here and show you this bag. Do you see the top stitching? I don't know if you can see that top stitching, but the, the stitch line is right, it's less than an eighth of an inch away from that, the fold. So that's our goal and also an eighth of an inch away from that. So you're really centering your binding to make sure that you can get your stitch line on either side of that binding, making it look spectacular. I keep testing myself to make sure I can, can actually do that and you'll see whether or not I can. I'm not very good at it, but I, I'm, I'm learning as I go, as we all do with our sewing. So just pull this over so that it covers that seam, okay? And gives you that eighth of an inch, slight eighth of an inch to go around. And we wanna make sure that we catch it on that side as well. We'll see how I do. I'm, <laughs> um, I'm not super professional at this, but also the other thing I learned is that if your if you look at it by the at the side if your front fold is slightly forward from your the back one um, because you do need to cover the stitch line you see you do need to cover it then you still get that effect of the stitch line on both sides okay let's give this a whirl And now I really do use the stiletto for this as well. And I drop my needle and I always know exactly on my machine and you probably do on yours too, is find that point where you believe your stitch line will be consistent all the way around. So your fold should always be in a certain position on your foot. Okay, that seems quite obvious, but sometimes I, I'm looking at the edge and sometimes I'm looking at the fold. Just be consistent and you'll be good. Okay, now I want this in hand to, to get stitching. Let's give this a whirl. 
I am going to, I just realized, I need to increase my stitch width. And to make it look more like a top stitching um, stitch. And I think that will help me as well. Okay, I need to pull that over. Do you see the difference in my sewing machine? It's making a louder noise. And I can tell that it's going through new layers of fabric. And now it's not. Now it found that seam. just going to cut all that off and remove all that. Okay. So I'm actually quite surprised that it went through all those layers. Now I probably made my, my stitch width a little too big. So I'm going to back off on that when I do my main project. Um, but it went around and that was my concern is whether or not it would actually move enough. And it did stretch nicely. Now, what does it look like on the back? <laughs> That's my fear. Uh, I actually got it down in and on and off as I went around. So not perfect, but I think if I can keep it, it inside that seam line, it will be almost like an invisible stitch. So there we are. Um, so I got it to work. So now I have to decide whether or not I continue with the, the bias binding of the canvas or if I shift and change my strategy. But I think I'm going to go with the canvas because this surprised me as to how easy it was to actually turn it around that curve. So um, it is easier than I thought. So, okay, let's get back to our... Fabric Friday, and I think I better uh, finish my project. What do you think? Okay, so what did you think? What's your vote? Do I stick with the uh, bias binding from canvas, or should I shift and find a coordinating fabric that is from our cotton? What do you think? Um, I really, I know this was a, you know, a flat test, it's not something that has all the extra stuff attached to it to go around and all the stuff that you have to fiddle with when you're working with um, these layers of fabrics uh, making a backpack underneath your sewing machine needle. But it really did show me that I think we can continue with the canvas. And I think that's my vote. I think I'm going to go with the canvas, finish my bag as I had planned, and... Um, it's going to work great. I'll do some little adjusting, I think, on the positioning of the binding. Always making sure I'm in that seam line when I'm stitching, as well as um, I might even adjust the width of the binding that I'm working with to accommodate just that little difference in stiffness and um weight of the of the canvas because just a little bit different like if I had two and a half instead of two and a quarter or just a little bit between the two and a quarter and two and a half I think it would be a little bit better for covering the seams when they're bulky seams like this so and my goal really is to be able to create and so any bag 
by any designer 100% out of canvas. We shouldn't need to try to soften it up with a cotton um, along with the canvas. So that is going to be my, my goal. So down the road, a couple months from now, I'll find another bag and it will be 100% made from, from our canvas. The main fabric, the lining, and the coordinates. So I'm encouraged. Um, but the next project on my list for canvas, I like to always share that, is I'm going back to make, and I've already washed up the canvas, is the um, the tamarack jacket. I'm going to quilt this up on our long arm and make another tamarack jacket. I'm going to make it less fitted. I made the first one out of quilted or quilted cotton, um, cotton as the main fabric and cotton as our uh, lining, and uh, it's a little too fitted for me. So I want to make an extra large, really comfortable jacket, and I'm going to go back to the tamarack and make another one. And we'll see how that turns out with the canvas. And this is the Phoenix um, motif in the color lake, as well as the hand-dyed um, color lake as the lining. I, I better go and uh, press these up. They're not very pressed. But anyway, so let us know what questions you have about the um, Sobati canvas and how you are getting along and what are you making with it. So let us know and keep the questions coming. We hope you like this video and follow us on our Facebook and Instagram so that you can see updates on all of my little testers and projects that we're working on here with our Sew Boutique fabric. And I want to make one more uh, little shout out to our newsletter. We have been really trying to focus the audience of each one of our newsletters to your interests. So if you have not signed up for our newsletter, we certainly hope you do. And on our website, there will be this um, slide out that comes out of our, our homepage and asks for your email address. And then you have the option of also including your cell phone for text messages. We send um, little quick, here's a quick sale for 24 hours, or here's a quick this, or don't forget to watch the Fabric Friday video on our um, text messages as well. And some of you want text messages and don't want emails. So just that, perfectly fine. But there's also an option to designate your interests. We make fabric and design fabric for so many different applications. It's all batik, but not everybody has the interest of quilting or of garment sewing or of home decorating or of bag making. And so our challenge is always to show you what you can do with all of our batik fabric. And cotton isn't just for quilting, it can also be, of course, for garment sewing. And so that's our little, you know, trying to, to make sure that we're sharing everything when it comes to new fabrics and fabric updates with the whole email audience. But when it's focused on educational or fashion and you're a quilter and not a garment sewer, we want you to get receive in your inbox what interests you the most. So it's really important to get each one of those um, clicked in there. And if you love it all, <laughs> add us to, we'll add you to our complete uh, email listing as well. So um, I just wanted to shout that out as well. Just a reminder to sign up for those emails. And if you didn't select an interest, go back in and select an interest. You won't get a double email. You'll just help us understand what you're interested in. So enough for this Fabric Friday. We hope you have a wonderful weekend and um, I'm going to go back and keep working on this bag and hopefully get our, um, our tutorial up on YouTube quickly. Um, we have some family coming in this weekend, so it might not be this weekend, but we'll, we'll get it there soon. So I am about to finish this Got Your Back bag. And then since all the pieces are cut out for the smaller version of this bag, which is back at you, I'll get that one done as well. So you'll see them all on our YouTube channel and our website. And we'll have kits available 
with so many different options for fabric and hardware and patterns and all that good stuff. So until next week, have a wonderful weekend and keep sewing, smiling, and sharing. Thank you.